Welcome back to another coaches interview segment here on 605 Sports and Live Ticket TV. I'm your host, Heath Nimke. It's great to have you along here for another interview as throughout the winter season, we have been sitting down with area coaches and more specifically inside the DAC 12. But today's interview, we are stepping outside of the DAC-12, a team that was formerly in the DAC-12, but now in the Big East. That is the Beersford Watchdogs, a part of the Live Ticket TV family as well. And we're focusing more specifically on the Watchdog Boys basketball team. As earlier, I was able to catch up with head coach Ben Short right before the month of February coming into the game as it was getting ready to take on the Vermilion Tangers, Coach Short and his crew. A 10-3 Overall, this was a good beers for Watchdogs team that going into it, as I mentioned, 10 and 3, their only losses coming against number one Dakota Valley and also against number two Sioux Valley twice. Of course, once during, I guess, well, twice during the regular season, but once during regular season play, and then also in a Big East Tournament Championship game, which indicates just how good this Watchdogs team is. And of course, they're really getting close to the end of this season and also find themselves in Region 4A for Class A. It's been extremely difficult for them to really have success over the past few years within the region just because of how stacked it has been. But things certainly are going to be difficult once again if the Watchdogs want to make a deep run. But when catching up with Coach Short, he mentioned this all the way goes back to the summer but had a lot of indication for what the football team was able to do as one of the smallest teams in Class A, but they didn't let that bug them, and it has transferred over onto the basketball court, including some exciting players as well, and how they are such a close-knit family. In just his second year with the Watchdogs, Coach Short has really made a turnaround with this program, and they're hoping to make a full run. Here is our conversation about where the season's at so far at 10-3 and overall, how the guys transformed from well with Coach Rosie to now and how they get ready for the postseason. Ben Short here with our coaches' interviews. Well, Coach, as you get ready for the Vermilion Tanagers, that game coming up here, and we'll talk more about it in just a moment, but I'd like to revisit this entire season so far. And I got my chance, actually, it feels like, to get some to know at least some of these guys or at least some of the names of part of this basketball team when it came to the football team, the success they had. And it just seems like it has carried over going back to the fall and even going back now two, three years. This seems like it's been a team that has building, has been crescendoing to this point where you're at at the moment. How does it feel kind of being at this point with the guys and just growing up so much for the past couple of years to having so much success on the basketball court this season? Yeah, um, I feel like uh, Coach Ebert, the head coach for the football program, and his uh, coaching staff has really developed uh, a culture, a winning culture on, in the fall. And like you said, with a lot of our athletes, they're multi-sport athletes, and kind of being able to come in here my first year as a head coach last year to inherit some of those guys that already had that culture, that, that work ethic built in uh, from football and cross country that it made my life a lot easier and just kind of laying that groundwork that I will have the same expectations that the football and cross country coaches have. So it's, it's nice when a school has uh, head coaches and different programs that uh, care about their athlete success, not only in their sport. So it makes our life easier um, as we go throughout the, out the season. Well, you talk about your second year as head coach. Did you have any pushback? Did you find yourself in uncharted waters coming in as the new head coach? Or did the guys take to it very quickly of what you wanted to bring across and how you want to change watchdog basketball? Well, I, I'll admit, I didn't know how much I could push that first summer that I, that I took over. So um, kind of just went with the flow and then when it came to basketball season and by the end of the season, when I had my exit interviews and meetings with all my guys, I just got the overwhelming feeling um, that they finally realized that, Hey, we have the, we have the potential. Um, it's the skill set is there. 
we just need to put in that extra time in in the rosy and and things like that which rosy for those of you that are not familiar that's our summer workout program and um i really challenge the guys to take care take care of themselves with that because we had conversations the next day in practice about um certain things like we didn't lose that game because of missed shots and, and skills that we missed we 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 lost that game because they they just out physical us they they outmanned us and and the guys took that as a challenge and um our stat wise i think for attendance for rosie our workout summer program i think we were at like 90 percent attendance rate um and those days that they missed were because family vacations and things like that so it's not like they were skipping or anything so i was very very proud and we celebrated that before the season started um about their success in the off season and you talk about Coach Rosie. I, I know Coach Rosie personally myself. I have been through the workouts and certainly is a grind to what he puts you yeah. through with your body. And, and you, as you mentioned, you come out so much better. I mean, sore, absolutely. But you come yeah. out so much better as a person as well and just an even better athlete. Well, going into this season, Coach, I mean, we look at where you're at to uh, at this point almost or over halfway through the season, but things didn't necessarily necessarily begin the best way possible you beat Baltic and then you get number one and number yeah. two part of the region four and then the big east how much did that shoot confidence or maybe take away a little bit of confidence from the guys to open up the season that way um we know how good Dakota Valley and Sioux Valley is we we play Sioux Valley not only during the, the school year but in the summer we we see each other a lot through team camps and things like that so we knew what we were getting ourselves into and definitely not an easy way to start the schedule. Uh, but it really put us in perspective of, Hey, uh, we got stuff to work on. Uh, we're, we're definitely not all there yet in terms of, um, what we're trying to accomplish schematically and, and things like that. So it definitely put us in a place a little bit, but I think it's helped us in the long run where we've now played these other teams and just kind of, well, we we had to play DV and uh, Sioux Valley. We can we can take on anybody now. So it's and then our third loss too is was against Sioux Valley as well. So our only two our only three losses are against the number one and number two team in the state. So. We feel pretty accomplished about that. Yeah, I want to continue going right into that because you mentioned you get into uh, the Big East Conference Tournament, which is played a lot like the state tournament where you kind of just do it over a few different days and then it's just over with just like that. But as you mentioned, you were able to get to what we call the, the championship game of that Big yep. East Tournament to take on Sioux Valley. Is that kind of when you knew this team was going to be special? Um. I knew it in the summer. It was maybe the guys didn't realize it, but just how the success we were having in our team camps and uh, the, how hard they were working in the weight room. And I knew we were on the cusp of a few games we probably should have won last season. Um, and I told the guys and I told parents that, hey, we could we can do something that Beersford basketball hasn't done for a while. And let's have a, not only a winning season, but a, a very successful season um, at that. So, the guys, now that we've won four or five games in a row, experiencing that win, that being in the win column, uh, beating up on our rivals, Canton, um, it's really given us some, some motivation and momentum moving forward. Not to take any way or anything away from this season, but it's going to be extremely difficult for your group when it comes to postseason. You could even throw this much out there that you might be one of those big teams to watch that actually misses the Sodak 16 because of where you're going to find yourself at in the standings. And it could be just leading back to Dakota Valley once again. I know you're not looking at the postseason right no. now at the moment, but how much is that on your mind as a coach? Um, as a coach, we can only control what we can control, right? And um, from the beginning, it was our goal to host a regional game, which Beersford hasn't done in a very long time. Um, so just to accomplish that first, and then I guess whoever we play the next round is, we'll take it one game at a time. But our goal is just to put ourselves in a situation where we're hosting. And then I guess we find out we found out with our football team, um, get in the playoffs, win one game and then anything's possible after that. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, many people had you going to West Central and even competing for one minute. And all of a sudden, next thing we knew, it was going down to the very last second. Of course, I, I was there. And it was extremely exciting to see. All right, let's focus on this game against the Vermilion Tangers, a team that, as you mentioned, has kind of had your number over the past few years. But this is a Tangers team that hasn't been necessarily hitting all their strides. They've started to move some younger guys up as well. Well, what have you seen on Vermilion that makes them a special team and not a team you can just easily overlook? Uh, well, Vermilion's just always well coached. Um, no matter if they they have all the guys they need or not, or who's dressing for Vermilion, they're going to be prepared. Uh, so we know we're, we're we're expecting a close game, and uh, like you said, they kind of beat us up last year for sure. And um, being so close to each other. Uh, I know a lot of my guys know their players and probably vice versa. So um, we're looking forward to it and we're looking forward to playing at home this year and hopefully uh, get back in the, in the win column. And we can't, not talk about your players as well. And there's been a couple of special ones, including Tate Van Otterloo. He's been just amazing so far, averaging over 20 points a basketball game. How exciting has he been, not just scoring, but more specifically leading the way on and off the court for the Watchdogs? Tate, Tate's a, uh, an awesome kid. Uh, he's honestly uh, one of my favorite players I've ever coached. He just not just because of his talent and his skill, he's, his personality uh, is kind of a goofball, but <laughs> when it comes to uh, the basketball game and he feeds off the crowd, he feeds off his teammates and his energy, his enthusiasm, um, he's one of those guys that when he makes one or two shots, the, the, the hoop, the rim gets very big and um, he, he definitely leads us in, in that aspect where if he's, if he's, on top of his game, if he's um, running around having fun, the guys seem to, to be following him. So, And you talk about the rest of the players as well that follow right behind Tate. I mean, you look at Aiden, Andrew, Jake, even going into the bench with Malachi, Justin, and, and John. How important has this team just been able to come together as a brotherhood and really buy into this process on the court? Yeah, and it started in in the summer with it's just crazy what like rosy workout program team camp it's not the skill set it's not the the obviously the the strength you gain from all those workouts and things like that a lot of it i think is just the, like you said the brotherhood or the team for uh togetherness that they gain from just being with each other all that time uh i we played four or five team camps we played over 30 games this past summer um on top of rosy so these guys have been together. Um, we've been at the battle together for quite a few months now that um, it's, it's nothing like I've ever had before. These guys are having fun. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the video online. Uh, we're, we're in the elementary school play, having practice, and we're intense. We're battling. I'm chewing them out, going through a drill, and the ball bounces off the main hoop and goes into the one of our side hoops. It's like a miraculous shot. And the guys go from serious to laughing and goofing around, smiling, <laughs> running up and down the court. So they're, they're having fun, which is makes my job as a coach a lot easier. It's, it's so enjoyable. So they're, they're together for sure. And our, us as, as coaching staff, we're just there to guide them in the right direction. Coach, before I let you go, just looking, and we talked about the postseason, but bringing it back to the regular season after Vermillion, there's still kind of another three games that are left on the schedule. And let's be honest with the weather, we really don't know what it could be like still playing at home for the Watchdogs. What would you say to the fans who haven't been able to get out to see your team play yet? Um, we're we're just an athletic bunch. Uh, we like I said, we we haven't even mentioned Jake Goldrich, the senior. Uh, uh, Mason Heiberger, those guys are six three, six four, but uh, they play like six eight, six nine. They play big ball down there. They play some bully ball. Um, Jake has crazy vertical. Um, we just we just like to get up and down the court, have fun, uh, put a couple dunks down when we can, make a lot of shots. So, uh, the, like I said, the guys are just having so much fun that uh, just being together now for two years, it's it's been a lot easier. 
um, to get these to get these wins and even in the losses um, we know what we did wrong and we're we're which is good we're we're trying to get better every single day. Once again, that was head coach Ben Shore of the Beersford Watchdogs as I was able to catch up with him right before they took on the Vermilion Tanagers on January 31st. And finishing off this entire segment, we can go to that game. Beersford Watchdogs got a three-point victory 48-45 48-45 to 45 over Vermillion. You can go back and watch that game as well. Right there on Watch Dogs Live, all part of the Live Ticket TV family. We even got to catch up with Coach Short once again, and also one of the star players from that game, and as you heard Coach Short talk about him, Tate Van Otterloo joined us on the post game to talk more about the success of this team and as they continue to move along in this season. It has been fun to watch, and it'll be interesting to see how far the Beersford Watch Watchdogs can make it when postseason rolls around. We want to thank once again Coach Short for joining us. Also, we want to thank Watchdog Nation for making it possible to help out each and every game with Watchdogs Live. I'm Heath Nimke. Until next time, keep on listening for more interviews here on Live Ticket TV and 605 Sports.